Welcome to the Canadian Homeschooler Podcast, where we have real conversations about all things homeschooling from a Canadian perspective. I'm your host, Lisa Marie, and today I'm joined with my co-host, Elena. In this episode, we're going to talk about homeschooling through the summer. So grab your favorite drink and come join us on the couch. Since summer's here, we thought that maybe we should start a conversation about summer learning and homeschooling. Our family tends to just keep doing the same old, same old. We school some days, we take days off, we just kind of go with the flow. But I know that's not what everybody does. So how do you guys handle summer? Um, We've always taken the summer completely off. Um, I'm seeing a trend more and more for families to continue year-round schooling, which is fine if that's what works for them. However, I always encourage people to figure out what works best for them. For me personally, I know that if I continued on year-round over the last 14 years, I probably wouldn't be able to keep going. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. I just need a complete brain break to not at all think about it and just be mom instead of mom and homeschool teacher. So for us, we homeschool year round because of a couple of reasons. One is that my husband works all summer and is off in the winter. So we tend to have more time off in the winter when my husband is home. Also, because our family tends to be very fluid, we don't have very structured days necessarily. So we end up taking a lot of breaks throughout the week during the school year. So we just continue going so we can take days off whenever we want to. For us, that means that there may be days where we do more schoolwork and other days where we do a lot more play. But it happens throughout the entire year. We don't really have a structured. Now we're taking a break off. So that's for us. That allows me to make sure we're just continuously going. We're always just plodding along. We're just when we we don't take the break intentionally that says now you finished grade three, now you're starting grade four. It literally is you finished grade three math and now you're gonna start grade four math. There's not for us a cut hard and dry break between the grades, which you know some people like that. I don't really care because we tend to switch our curriculum or move curriculum just at our own pace. So it allows us to kind of just keep going with the flow. And it means I don't have to try and drag people back into a routine, which is helpful for me because I'm not very good at the whole consistent structure thing personally. So it's easier if I just keep going and I don't have to stop because then I might not ever start again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So why do you guys take breaks? I know you said it was because you needed a, like a mental health break, but how does that impact like your school year or flow? Yeah. So um, that was our m- one main reason that we have taken that time. Um, a couple other reasons are for our kids as I got older, um, we've done a local summer camp and it happens that um, there's different age groups. And because my kids aren't particularly close together for ages, then like each camp has its own age group and it ends up being like this summer there's like three different like my three older ones go to the camps and there's three different weeks that they're gone for that and then we have our week for our family vacation and then we have maybe sometimes we'll go visit somebody like friends or family somewhere or that kind of thing so it just the time just gets eaten up pretty quick so there that's that's another reason and also I just really find especially where I am that summer weather is really short and so I don't want to be spending it doing schoolwork. I want to just enjoy you know time at the beach and um, time with friends and another reason too is because a lot of my kids friends over the years have been public schooled so um, we don't have a a huge it's bigger now than it was in the past but thinking back like especially the beginning of my homeschooling years um there were very few homeschooled kids. So most of my kids' friends were public schooled. And I just don't think that would go over well for my kids to have their friends, um, you know, even just playing outside where they can see them right out our window that looks right out to the street um, Mm -hmm. when they're trying to do school. So those are kind of all different reasons why we've chosen to do that. But as far as transitioning, I find that when we get back in September or even um, after Christmas break or even like we take a break in March, again, we just tend to follow the more traditional school calendar, mainly because of the homeschool friend or not, sorry, public schooled friends. Um, it just made more sense for us over the years, especially when um, some of my kids close friends were like right in the neighborhood. But as far as transitioning back after those kinds of times, we've always just done it slowly. So the first day we would just do some math and then the next day maybe we'd do um, some math and one other thing. And then maybe the next day we would do that again. And then, you know, the fourth day we would add in three things and just kind of just gradually, um, I mean, not like a spe- specific 
plan, but just gradually add in things as we're able um, to kind of ease in. And I've always done that after any break and that's worked well. I think it was Louise House that first told me about doing that. <laughs> uh, she has some really good advice. And uh, yeah, we we took that advice and that's worked really well for us. I think the important thing to kind of clarify here is that there are two kind of sections I would consider for this conversation. The first is whether or not you decide to continue to formally keep doing programs and your curriculum and your things. And then there's also just like life experiences because summer does offer a lot of learning opportunities. Just we don't necessarily label it as school, right? So right. Yeah. yeah. Well, even just in regular life, like I mean, the formal school day might you know, stop at whatever time, whenever you're done, whatever you were doing, but it's not like, oh, well, now the kids' brains are turned off and they're not learning <laughs> anything. Like, you know, you might Maybe learn stuff in the evening or you might learn stuff on the weekend or on holidays or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, learning happens all the time. Yes. All right. So I know that you're big, you guys are huge nature lovers at your house. So have you ever done or as a way that you incorporate nature discovery or exploration with your family throughout the summer? Yeah, so there has been a few times where we've continued doing something with uh, friends that we had like a group going during the year. There was two families that met up um, a long time ago. We don't do that group anymore. Just life changed. People moved, dif different circumstances. But I remember uh, one or maybe even two summers where we continued meeting up weekly and did like a little nature study group just when it worked, like when we were home and they were home kind of thing. Um but um, typically nothing formal, but I find because, yeah, I am so into nature that it's just a natural thing anytime we're outside. So I think of even just last night, like just on a bike ride with my son and then he stopped and, you know, asked me questions like, what's that? And, oh, look at that bird and look at this. And, you know, then I just naturally just teach what I know and kind of point out all the different things that I know I want him to learn how to identify different plants and trees and stuff that we see. So uh, it just happens naturally for, for us. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not as, I'm not against nature and I do love being outside and I used to be very active outside as a young person, but it's not like I've ever really intentionally said, let's learn about trees. It just kind of became a discussion that would happen as we're taking walks or we see a tree that has a weird shaped leaf compared to everything else. Cause it's an oak yeah. tree instead of a maple tree. So those kinds of things I, I found over the years, a really cool, if you can find an app that can identify a plant, if you're not as knowledgeable about what they are, like if you can find an app that has like a plant ID option, then it's really helpful because I don't know all the plants, but then kids, they love finding out with you and then you can discover more about them. And I know you have some resources about birds as well, where you can learn to identify birds more than me just going, Elena, I took this random video <laughs> and far in the background is a sound. Can you tell me what bird that was? <laughs> But I did it. I knew what it, it was. So. <laughs> I was impressed. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think it helps to also for just a little side note on identification over the years. Like, yeah, I've learned a lot of what's in my area. But when I don't know something, I'll try to take pictures of as much of it as I can. Like if it's a tree, I might take the bark, the leaf, whatever, you know, uh, seed it has on it, like whatever identifying features. And then I'll ask like I'm part of some online groups for things or I'll ask somebody that I know that's knowledgeable in the area, that kind of thing, because it does help to ask people who live where you do and that kind of thing as well. Yeah. And I, I found over the years some of the best times to do things like geocaching and to go river walking, like just even exploring, like letting the kids in the creek, you know, go. Yeah get messy. Summer is a great time for that kind of thing. Great time to go like fossil hunting if you live in a place that has fossils and even just recognizing animal prints in like mud and stuff. It's a fantastic time to just see what's going on in the world around you and to not have the necessarily restrictions due to weather because in theory <laughs> it's drier and it's you know warmer so you can do those kinds of adventures. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely in the summertime, um, other than like I said, that time that we met up with the other homeschool families, it's more of just, uh, I noticed something cool. So I point it out to the kids and, you know, talk about it for 10 seconds or whatever. And they might ask more questions or they might say, oh, cool, and run off to something else. Or when they point out something, hey, what's that? And then they start asking questions. It's more just natural. It's not like today we are going to learn about this. It's, hey, we're going on a bike ride. Let's go. And then whatever we yeah. see. And I think that's one of the best things about summer is that it's just so organic because you have that freedom to 
include it however you want, right? It doesn't yeah. have to be the structured plan. So that's pretty cool. The other really cool thing about summer is that's when a lot of the um, field trips and places like pioneer villages and indigenous villages and some of the community activities are often running in the summer. So I know in the past we've wandered through and we've been in a place that had a I think it was the War of 1812 reenactment. So they had like the soldiers in red and they were shooting off their rifles. And that was really exciting and cool for my boys. They loved seeing all that. But those kinds of things aren't always available in the off tourist season. So it's a great time yeah. to kind of connect with and find activities that are going on in your community and in local like day trip places that you can get to. So that's the opportunity to maybe stack up on your field trip plans for the <laughs> for what's available in the summertime as well. Yeah, we've definitely done that even, um, <clears throat> and we have family that lives further away. So if we have a trip to them, then sometimes we'll add in something like that when we're visiting. Um, so yeah, I know we've explored some of those kinds of places. It kind of depends where you live, what's available, but definitely a, a great time for that. Yeah. And as you said, travel as well. Traveling is a, it's summer's a handy time to do that if you can uh, afford to. <laughs> yeah, or have the time available to do that. Whether that's traveling to see family or friends, or just traveling because you can travel, come kind of see Canada is a great way. And if you're like me and you're broke and your family's too busy and you can't go anywhere, it's a good time to do a virtual trip. You can do it and get hands on and make food and all the other things that you can do. I know too. Um, a good thing that is often not too expensive is to explore what local conservation areas or provincial parks are near you. Um, so I know for us, there's a provincial park about 20 minutes away, and then there's another one about an hour and a half away, and it's pretty affordable for go for the day. Um, usually anywhere from eleven dollars to some of the more popular parks. Um, might be $20 for a whole however many people you can fit in your vehicle. I mean, that's pretty cheap for a family experience. And then I know that at least here and many other places in Ontario, you can even uh, borrow a parks pass at the library. So then you don't have to um, pay at all. You just borrow your pass, uh, present it when you go through the gate, and there you go. Yeah, and many conservation areas also are fairly inexpensive for the day. Um, and those can offer a lot of nature learning that happens just like we were talking about, just naturally, um, things you see. And sometimes they have uh, like a nature center or visitor center or different things like that that you can go look at. And yeah, it's just fun. And the other thing I've noticed is that if you check the website of the specific place that you're going to, they sometimes have workshops and activities or kids programs that they run. Yeah. So then you can, you can learn while you're there. So that's kind of a fun thing to do, too. Yeah, especially on weekends, I find the park near here often has things on weekends because that's when a lot of people are camping. So yeah, for sure. And of course, you can always go camping. So I know my kids this summer are dying. My younger two are dying to go camping. So I'm trying to find myself a tent so I can go sleep on the ground with my kids. So that's <laughs> what we're going to do this summer. Uh, they'd also want to try all those things like fishing and starting a fire. So it's a good time to do some basic life skill training as well, because it's kind of just naturally ingrained when you do things like camping. And I, I don't, have the ability to or interest in buying a trailer the way you can tip out and basically have a house on wheels. Oh, let's that's not camping. <laughs> that's not camping in my opinion. But I will say I grew up in a trailer every summer, so I'm not against trailers. I just, if I'm going to do the experience, let's give them the full experience. We'll build a tent and we'll go from there. I mean, I'm not roughing it to the point where we're going to be making it out of a tarp, but we're going to, we're going to have fun. <laughs> so that's, I think summer is a good time to do that as well. Yeah, for sure. No, we've gone tent camping, um, Oh, I don't know how many times over the years we go every summer. Um, sometimes we've gone other times as well. And uh, yeah, it's always been a lot of fun. And yeah, I'm not against trailers. I think that would be a neat experience. But tent camping does offer some unique experiences and uh, learning opportunities. I know um, my son keeps asking, when can he go fishing? And uh, my husband and I are not into fishing, but we have taken the kids over the years just because they asked and wanted the experience. So anyway, um, I know here in Ontario, there's a free family fishing day, um, mm -hmm. so you don't have to have a license. So that makes it a lot more affordable for going. Um, I, I think kids don't need a license, but if you're actually fishing yourself, then um, you do need one. So yeah, anyway, um, that's something to look into. Sometimes they even have... Uh, one in the winter here and then uh, they even have like a fishing derby thing for kids and yeah so it's neat to kind of explore those opportunities pretty sure Ontario Parks maybe the last couple of years even had a free parks day um, just anybody could go so just there's if you kind of keep your um, eyes open and um, you know 
uh, available to what's in your community, there can be different opportunities that can be quite affordable, um, even when you're dealing with uh, budget constraints. Yeah. Um, when summer, if you're willing to leave your kids up late, summer is also a really handy time to look at star watching. So if you're in a big city, just start driving <laughs> until, all the, until all the lights are out and then you can enjoy a better view of the stars than you can from the light pollution, unfortunately. But if you do live in somewhere that you can access a place that's got clear skies and access to seeing stars, do it. It's a great time, especially since it's not too cold at nighttime and you can enjoy seeing the constellations and having discussions about all the stories. And don't forget to take some time to learn some of the indigenous stories. It's really interesting to compare them with the the stories that we're all familiar with, which were based on Greek mythology in general. So it's really interesting to hear a different perspective of the stories of the stars. So there's some really good resources out there as well. I don't have them off the top of my head, but uh, we do have, I've seen them before. So there's some good ones. Yeah, no, I know sometimes here though, you'd have to wait pretty dark for all the stars, all the stars to come out pretty late at night in the mm -hmm. summer. But uh, yeah, it just, um, it can be worth it to have that experience um, for sure. All right. So the other thing I was going to say is summer is a great time to do like crafts and hands-on learning activities because you can get messy <laughs> and then you can hose them off. <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite things to do is to take the kids outside, let them get as messy as they want. And then we just pull out the hose, hose them down and send them inside. But I do know that our local communities in the years that we've been, the places that we've been often have different things that are running in their community. So I know that right now the place we're at, one of the, community centers runs weekly or bi-weekly craft time so it's like come do art in the park so they set up you you have to pre-register but you can go and you can do the craft in the day i know it's not available in every place but again see what's available in your community because you never know what's out there if you don't want to start poking around in fact i had no idea that in our local area there is like a food bank type place it's actually a community like health center kind of thing and they have so many programs that they open up for kids and they open up for the community and they just are really interesting to participate and they're not all the same typical things some of them are really interesting like teaching kids how to do a farmer's market and those kinds of stuff so i thought that was kind of cool as well yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I know where we live, there's uh, a small museum that runs some things in the summer and um, the library has some different things. And I've also seen stuff through the Ontario. Now, I, I always say this, wrong. I want to call it early. It's called Early On Center. It used to have a different name when my oldest kids were younger. Yeah, so that's for kids zero to six. They have different things. We haven't done a whole lot with the Early On Center with my son, but I did a lot when my older kids were younger. And there's some neat things. Last year, we did a free farm tour. Um, so that was pretty cool. We just signed up and showed up and it's pretty fun. So there can be a lot of different activities that way if you just keep an eye on it. Yeah, well, while we're speaking about the library, I know that across Canada, there's a program run through many libraries, not every library, but many libraries called the TD Summer Reading Program. And you go and you sign up and there's challenges for you to read books throughout the summer. And then they often have related activities to the theme of the year. So if the theme is about dinosaurs, then you're going to find lots of activities related to dinosaurs for different groups and challenges. I know that often the libraries where we are have like prizes and activities and games and all kinds of stuff so it can be a lot of fun and they're typically free just check to see if your local library has it because it can be a great way to encourage reading during the summer especially for kids who aren't overly keen on reading but it gives them incentive and motivation so that's always a fun thing to do yeah we've done the summer reading club at our library um Oh, I don't know how long now. <laughs> There's been a couple of years we've taken it off. But um, yeah, my kids have all done it at some point multiple years. And uh, yeah, it's always been free and always been interesting. And it's nice that you can show up the weeks that you're uh, able. And if you're not able, then you just don't show up. So it's been a really good experience for them. I do tend to just leave it up to them, though, if they want to read and get their hours or if they don't. If they don't want to log their hours, then they can just show up for the activities on the day the library is running that because I don't want it to be a big stress. I don't want to end up being like stressful for them or a pressure on me to make sure they're doing it. You know, I just, yeah, I have enough stuff like that in my life. So I just keep it simple. Yeah, it's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be stressful. So it's just uh, exactly. a good way to encourage reading in the summer when kids may be more tempted to be on screens. So it can be a good way to encourage that. Another fun thing that I've done in summer is my, a DIY summer camp. 
So I, I know I have an outline on the website for a summer camp idea, but what I've done in the past, okay, so during the COVID years, I think it was the second summer when everything shut down again. And my kid, or it was, we weren't shut down, but we were like, nothing was really running yet. And all the kids in the community were like a little sad, especially my kids, because they just really wanted to be with people and that stuff. Yeah. So I did a, so I did a DIY summer camp. I literally messaged all the, all the families in my local community that I knew. So there was like five or six of us with kids around the same age. I sent them an invitation and said, Hey, I'm doing camp at the park. Bring your kids. You have to stay because I'm not paying for insurance for your children. Like you have <laughs> to be there. Um, but it's gonna run from this time to this time, and we're just gonna have camp in the park. And so every day I picked a theme, and we just did activities on the theme. So like day one, well, I think we did dinosaurs. So I literally we made bones out of the kids and I pre-made a bunch of salt dough bones, and we hid them in the in the sand at the beach volleyball center or like there was a sand pit or something i forget what it was but there's something in the park and then i brought an inflatable dinosaur suit and chased children around the park dressed <laughs> up like a dinosaur and we looked at books and we made we made fossils the kids all made their own fossils and we did stuff like that day one and then another day we did science day where we just did a whole bunch of really easy science experiments I did all this out of my own budget because I, but I tell you, when I'm talking about my own budget, I'm not talking thousands of dollars. I'm talking how cheap can we make this be? What resources do I already have in my house to make this possible? Camp, quote, quote, doesn't need to be anything big, scary, huge, expensive. It just has to provide activities that are engaging to kids. So it could literally be bubbles. You know, like you just fill up a tub with bubble and you're ready to go. Um, but so we did all that. It was a lot of fun. The kids had a great time. It was so much fun for parents because they did. They were like, what do I do with my kids? Because there's no camps this year. We're really like most of the people in our communities, kids are public schooled. So they're used to being programmed in the summer or and they or they just hadn't seen people in so long that they just wanted to connect. So it was a really great way to do that. And you can do summer camp at home with your own kids if you want to, too. You don't have to set up a whole thing for the community like I did because I'm crazy but uh, you're welcome to do it on your own too just for your own kids the other thing that you can do in summer is see if there's a local if you're okay with it there's a often local churches have something called VBS or vacation bible schools and they're usually low cost or free I've seen free ones as well but you just your kids can go depending on the time sometimes it's half day sometimes it's a whole day it depends on the local church and what they're offering for you they're usually on a theme and yes they're going to be religious and faith-based but there are often a lot of really great and fun activities i know the church that my kids have been going to they have summer camp and over the years so far they've done wildlife adventures so they had it was all like animal themed one year and they had things like the zoo to you people who bring animals for you to check out and they did a beekeeper and they did that kind of thing and then last year they had an all about canada adventure so they did all the provinces of canada they learned how to be um survival skills so they did stuff like an outdoor adventure day and they had you know and you always do the typical water day so everyone gets soaking wet and has a lot of fun but Sometimes those are really great things. And uh, as we talked, though, sometimes you have to volunteer. So if you're not able to commit the time or energy or mental capacity to do that, eh, maybe steer clear if you can't volunteer. But those are some options that you could do if if you're able to. Yeah, I know in our community, too, um, my, my kids are part of a youth group. And so things technically end by the end of May. Then they have some programming throughout the summer um, just at area parks where they do different things. Um, and that's all free. Um, and so that's another opportunity if you're open to kids doing youth group type things is see what's still running, maybe occasionally, but still running in the summer as well for that. And then around the house, there's still tons of things that you can do with your kids that is, I would quantify as learning, like gardening. Yeah, for sure. Gardening. Um, maybe you haven't taken time to, you know, teach cooking or um, maybe there's a bunch of decluttering you need to do. And like, those are all important life skills. I know for us, um, we do have gardens and the kids over the years have gotten inv involved at different stages. Um, I find at one point as they get older, some of them have lost interest. Some of them still are interested. Even if uh, you're, you know, you're listening to this and it's already a bit into summer, there can still be some things that you can plant and enjoy. You can go over to the local uh, hardware store or Canadian Tire. Those kinds of places often have like pre-grown started plants. So if you didn't get a chance to start them from seeds, you can just buy ones that have been grown already and plant them in your garden. That's what we'll be doing because we are didn't do very well with our seeds starting this year. So we'll be adding some pre-made plants when we get around to it.
Yeah, you can also plant beans fairly late into the season. Um, they like the heat. And I know that what I usually do is plant some earlier and then leave a spot where I plant some later so they don't all ripen at once. <laughs> um, so I've planted them even into the beginning of July. It depends where you live. Our first frost usually comes uh, around September 10th or so. So I have to make sure they mature by then and everything. But uh, depending where you are, you can plant things further into the summer. You don't have to plant them all necessarily right as soon as spring hits. Summer is a great time to work on your life skills. So it's a good chance to give your kids to learn about cars, like car upkeep. They like washing cars. They like to check out the inside of the engine. It's a good time to do that. You can also do things like let's do laundry. Maybe you could even do a comparative study between what did our clothes feel and look like if we dry them in the dryer versus put them on a line or we could you could get crazy and start doing all the costs of electricity versus drying it yourself if you <laughs> want to i'm not going to do that because i can't figure that out for myself but you know if you got smart kids go for it <laughs> and of course it's a great time to be physically active and and moving and talk about your health in the summer as well because there's lots of opportunities to get outside and do things like biking and walking and running and playing at the playground with friends, that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. And if you live in an area where it's hard to connect with other homeschoolers, there's lots of opportunities to connect with other kids that are normally in public schools that are, you know, available at the park or available at the library or whatever. And I think, I mean, social skills is definitely a, a thing you need to learn. Um, obviously with homeschooling, it's not that we're not socialized, but um it does off offer different opportunities to meet up with other kids. And I just find summers is such a great time to just let learning just happen without stressing about it. I, I try not to make a big deal of anything. It just kind of just happens. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a very unschooly approach for summer, which is perfect. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we do do some of that during the year too. Um, we do some formal learning as well, but overall I like to just take opportunities as they come. Yeah. The other thing I love to do with my kids in the summer is at the beginning of the summer, I get them to make me a bucket list. What do you guys want to do this summer? And we usually end up with this giant list with lots of really un unrealistic things and some impossible things like I want to eat a giant freezy. We can make that happen. I'll buy you a giant freezy. That's within my budget. So there's options for the kids to do things. We've over the years, some of the things have been a lot of fun and it's been a interesting way to see what they would like to do too because some of the ideas that they have are fantastic and I never would have thought about it my daughter right now is totally convinced that we need to go to fan expo in Toronto at the end of August I'm like why I'm just curious why you want to go because we've gone before we went one year when she was probably five and now she's nine but she wants to go because she wants to dress up in a costume Okay, so I thought that maybe it was all the cool activities and things that she just wants to dress up in a costume and be around other people dressed up in costumes to see what they dress up like. So we may be going to Fan Expo just to look at people's costumes. But, mm. you know, that's kind of interesting to see what their thoughts are, too, because they often have unique ideas. So it can be a lot of fun. And it usually ends up with things like I want to go to the beach and I want to play at a cool new playground and I want to visit grandma and grandpa and I want to go swimming or whatever. There's all these basic summer ideas, but they often have unique ones as well. Yeah, for sure. I know my kids have made lists before and, you know, anything from pick berries like wild strawberries or uh, wild blueberries or um, some areas might have a farm you can go to to pick stuff or uh, specific beaches they want to visit or specific friends they want to get together with, um, specific, yeah, specific playgrounds or um, hiking trails or biking adventures or just all sorts of stuff that they just, it's just a fun time to do some of those things for sure. Yeah, something else that I'd like doing in the summer and I've, I need to get back to doing it, but we mentioned farming a couple times and picking berries and those kinds of things. So it's a great up. Kids love going to farms. They may not be very good at picking all the things because they want to taste all the things, but it's a lot of fun to take them strawberry picking and stuff. But it's also a really great opportunity for them to see how that turns into other things. So making jam or turning things into relish or just learning how to can. It can be a really cool way for them to be involved in creating food for your family. So I think that's a, a good summer learning adventure as well. Also, summer is a really good time for us as homeschool parents to recharge. So we can take a break. You can mentally brace yourself for the next year and the plans to come in because, you know, 
even though I don't stop schooling and I move on to the to take a break and move on to the next things like intentionally, like I, I don't do it. I do have a period of time where I have to plan what we're doing next. Like what's the next plan? And and anybody who has taken an actual break during the summer, they also kind of need some time to plan what's next and buy the curriculum and think about the plans. So that's just another thing that, so take a break for yourself. Even if you're year round schooling, take a little bit of a break, just go with the flow, take some time, you know, and then be intentional about what's coming next so that you're prepared for the next year. But for, the beginning of summer just enjoy the break and have some fun uh another good thing to do is to think of the summer as kind of like your own professional development time so can listen to some podcasts listen read some books about homeschooling or about teaching or just about parenting or just a way to recharge yourself like how you can feel better as a parent or just self i don't want to say self-help books i don't like that title but i mean just <laughs> That just books that encourage you and speak to you and help you feel like you've made the best decisions or just some other people's experiences. If you're going through some challenging times, it can be really good to see other people's encouraging words. So I think that that's important for us to take a break and think about us too, instead of just how can we add more learning into summer, it can be a really good idea for us to work on ourselves and our school experience and us as teachers. Yeah, I know for me, um, a lot of years when I've been more organized and haven't had so much going on with my life, I found as my kids got older, life got more busy, <laughs> um, is that I used to always plan my next homeschool year because we do do the September to, well, more like September to May, basically. I usually just lump June in with summer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I always tried to plan around March, April, May, um, the next school year and get all the stuff ordered and get it all planned out. And then I could completely shut off my brain for the summer. I wouldn't think about homeschooling, wouldn't read about homeschooling, I wouldn't talk about homeschooling, <laughs> wouldn't listen to anything to do with homeschooling until September. Um, so it's kind of a different take on things. That gave me refreshment. I think if I had started reading like books about you know how to teach better and how to organize this or do that or whatever i don't think that would have gone over well for me it's kind of i think i'm not saying your idea is bad of course but i'm just saying that for me that wouldn't work and so i think it's important to pick what works best for you if that's going to encourage you to read about homeschooling or to take some time to plan out your homeschool year during the summer then that's great but if it doesn't then don't feel that you have to do it that way I think it's the same thing. I mean, look at just the two of us have two different strategies for summertime. And I think it's easy to compare yourself and say, well, maybe that way is better. You know, maybe I have it right, or maybe you have it right, or maybe we should do it this way, or like that other homeschool mom we read about, or the one in our group or whatever. And we need to pick what works best for us. I think that's kind of the, the overall summary of it. Yeah. And I think that's the most important takeaway of everything is that the beauty of homeschooling is that it, everybody does it differently and does it the way that works best for them and their family. So our ideas here that we've shared some of the things that we approach for summer doesn't mean that's how you have to approach summer. If summer for you is hot and sticky and you want to enjoy the cool fall weather more than outside, by all means, go ahead and continue schooling through summer as you know, you can choose to hardcore school through summer and enjoy fall. You can do it however works for your family. So yeah, for sure. As we head into the summer season, I want to encourage you guys that you're allowed to take a break if you want one, but you don't have to take a break if you don't want to. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Canadian Homeschooler Podcast. We hope that you have a great summer no matter how you approach learning in these months. In the next episode, I'll be chatting with Colin McLeod from CelticFiddleGuru.com about music and creativity all the way from Scotland. If you have any feedback, ideas for topics, or people that we should connect with for interviews, please let us know. And don't forget to share this with your Canadian homeschooling friends. Thank you so much for joining in. Until next time, happy learning.